before jumping onto CloudFront console, we first need an origin to serve the content from. There are multiple origins that a CloudFront can distribute the traffic. We will see them in a couple of minutes, but for this session, we will use S3 static website as origin. For that, I have already set up a simple static website on S3. Let's take a look at the S3 bucket first. So let's search for S3. And here is the bucket, wizlabstraining.com. Let's open the bucket and go to properties. You can see that static website has been enabled and here is the website URL. So let's click on it. All right, here it is. We designed a simple static website just for this demo. It has some nice styling, but it does not interact with any database. It's just a static website. Okay, so far everything is good. We have this website uh, being served from S3 bucket, uh, which is on US East one region. Let's say if you have customers in Asia or in Australia, as we have seen in our theory lecture, the performance will be slower because of the network latency. So here is where CloudFront will play its part. So let's go back to AWS console and search for CloudFront and click on it. You will be taken to CloudFront console and this shows the list of CloudFront distributions you have already. And if you do not have, this page would be empty. When you want to use CloudFront to distribute your content, you create a distribution and uh, choose the configuration settings you want. So let's go ahead and create a distribution to distribute the content from our static website. You can create two types of distributions, web and RTMP. We use web to distribute web content such as HTML or CSS or JavaScript or image files to these edge locations from AWS. You can also use web to speed up live streaming to stream an event in real time. Whereas RTMP distributions stream media files using Adobe Media Server and the Adobe Real Time Message Protocol, which is also called as RTMP. An RTMP distribution allows an end user to begin playing a media file even before the file has finished downloading from a CloudFront Edge location. And also an RTMP distribution must use Amazon S3 bucket as the origin. Okay, so for our demo, we'll be using only a web distribution. So let's choose web. And here we need to configure the settings required for distribution. So let's take a look at each of these settings. The first one is origin. Here you can specify the origin from where the content is originally served from. This can be Amazon S3 bucket or web server in the form of elastic load balancers, AWS media package channel endpoint or AWS media store container endpoint. These are important to remember, could be a potential factor in your certification questions. So for a demo, let's choose our S3 bucket where we have the static website. And next one is origin path. This is an optional setting. If you want CloudFront to request your content from a directory in your Amazon S3 bucket or your custom origin, enter the directory name here, beginning with a slash. CloudFront appends the directory name to the value of origin domain name when forwarding the request to your origin. Let's say for example, my AWS bucket slash production. Next is origin ID. It is just a description to uniquely identify each origin for the distribution. This will be helpful if you have multiple origins in the same distribution, which is possible. Multiple origins are helpful if you want to serve certain content from one origin and the rest from another. You can add additional origins only once you created the distribution, not while creating it. We will take a look at this once we create the distribution. And the next setting is very important. Restrict bucket access. The setting is available when you select the origin as S3. If you're using an Amazon S3 bucket as the origin for a CloudFront distribution, you can either allow everyone to have access to these files or you can restrict access. 
If you want to require that users always access your Amazon S3 content using CloudFront URLs and not using Amazon S3 URLs, click yes. And then you can create a new identity or use existing identity. To require that users always access your Amazon S3 content using CloudFront URLs, you assign a special CloudFront user an origin access identity to your origin. Remember the term origin access identity. Once you have the origin access identity user created, you will have to grant read permissions on S3 bucket for this user. You can choose yes, update bucket policy so that bucket policy will be automatically updated or you can update it yourself later. Let's choose update bucket policy and uh, we will take a look at our bucket policy later. And here you can add a custom header to be sent from CloudFront to the origin. Probably helpful when to perform certain authorization on your origin. Let's say you allow requests only if this header from CloudFront exists. And uh, these are default cache behavior settings. The first one is path pattern, which is star, which means the following cache settings are applicable for all the requests. And this cannot be changed while creating. However, you can add more cache behaviors once the distribution is created, which we will take a look once the distribution is created. Next one is viewer protocol policy. If you want CloudFront to allow viewers to access your web content using either HTTP or HTTPS, specify the first option. Or if you want CloudFront to redirect all HTTP requests to HTTPS, you can choose the second one. And if you want CloudFront to require HTTPS, specify HTTPS only. But remember, when you specify this option, all the HTTP requests would fail. And next is list of HTTP methods you want to allow for this cache behavior. And for field level encryption config and cached HTTP methods, uh, these are default values and cannot be changed for the default uh, behavior cache settings. Next one is cached based on selected request headers. You can select whether you want CloudFront to cache your objects based on header values. If you choose whitelist from here, you can specify the headers that you want CloudFront to base caching on. Next one is caching objects. You can select use origin cache headers option if your origin server is adding a cache control header to control how long your objects stay in the CloudFront cache. If your origin does not add this header, uh, you can choose customize and select minimum and maximum TTL. TTL stands for time to live, which defines how long an object lives in the cache servers on edge locations. And in this setting, select whether you want CloudFront to include all user cookies in the request URLs that it forwards to your origin or only selected cookies or no cookies. If you select whitelist, Add the names of the cookies to the whitelist cookies field. And next setting is query string forwarding and caching. If you're not aware of query strings, they're simply part of the URL which are passed as parameters. For example, language equal to English or mode equal to view, etc. Select which query string parameters you want CloudFront to forward to the origin and which parameters you want CloudFront to base caching on. And next is smooth streaming. This setting is helpful if you have live streaming origin. Enable this option to use smooth streaming to stream a live event. And next is uh, restrict viewer access. This is also an important security setting to provide access only to authorized users by creating CloudFront signed URLs or signed cookies. If you enable this, Developers on your application has to create and distribute CloudFront signed URLs to authenticated users. Remember, these are different from S3 pre-signed URLs. CloudFront also has an action to create CloudFront signed URLs. And in here, you can select whether you want CloudFront to automatically compress content for web requests that include accept encoding header with zzip in the request header. And here is another exciting feature in CloudFront. You can trigger a Lambda function based off certain 
CloudFront events such as viewer request, viewer response, origin request, and origin response. And here you have distribution settings to configure how the content can be distributed to edge locations. Under price class option, you can specify which all edge locations you can distribute the content to. A price also depends on what you choose. Obviously, price is higher if you choose all edge locations than specific set of edge locations, but this also gives you best performance if you have customers all across the world. And here you can choose WAF Web ACL. WAF stands for Web Application Firewall, a security service provided by AWS for web applications. You can visit our WAF lecture under security for more information. And here you can also add alternate domain names for which you want to distribute the content. And here you can choose SSL certificate for HTTPS traffic. And you can also choose supported HTTP versions here that you want CloudFront to accept. The next one is default root object, which defines the object, for example, index.html, which will be returned when you hit the root URL of CloudFront. You can enable logging from here. If you enable, you need to configure S3 bucket and prefix where the CloudFront web access logs will be sent to. And you can enable IPv6 if you have users on IPv6 networks who want to access your content. Okay, that's quite a long config settings, isn't it? All right, let's go ahead and create distribution. Okay, the distribution is getting created. Meanwhile, let's take a look what we can do with a created distribution. Click on this distribution. And under general, you can edit the distribution settings. And under origin and origin groups, you can edit existing origins or you can add new origins to the same distribution. For the current origin, as discussed before, we configured restricted bucket access with origin access identity. For CloudFront, in order to access S3 bucket, this user must have been added to the bucket policy. So let's take a look at the S3 bucket policy. Let's open S3 in another tab and then navigate to our S3 bucket and go to permissions and then click on bucket policy. And there it is. You can see a new policy statement has been added to allow read access for the CloudFront user origin access identity. Okay, let's go back to CloudFront distribution. And the next one is behaviors tab. What we have is the default behavior we saw while creating the distribution. We can add additional behaviors. And when you click on create behavior, you can specify a specific path pattern so that all the requests matching this pattern can be sent to a different origin or you can set a different cache settings such as min and max TTL values, etc. For example, if you want to serve all your images from S3 bucket and HTML, CSS and other content from a web server, you can create two different origins and create two different cache behaviors and set two different path patterns so that requests would be sent to the appropriate origins. And next are error pages. You can create custom error responses based over default HTTP error codes. For example, for 400 bad request errors, you can provide a custom error path, which could be slash bad request error dot HTML, and then provide correct HTTP response code. The next one is restrictions. Under restrictions, you can enable geo restriction. This restriction is useful if you need to prevent users from certain countries from accessing your content. You can click on edit here. And when you select yes, you can either whitelist or blacklist the countries. It is pretty straightforward. Whitelist will ensure only listed countries can access and the rest all cannot. Whereas blacklist will ensure the listed countries cannot access the content and rest all can access. 
And the next one is invalidations. This is also an important feature in CloudFront. You can create invalidations to remove object from the cache. You can provide object paths as shown here to invalidate them from the cache. So when a request is made to any of the objects match these invalidated paths, CloudFront will send the request to the origin again and get the data from the origin and store it again in the cache servers on edge locations based on the cache behavior settings. This is especially useful when you know these objects are changed. For example, you made a deployment which had changes to certain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. You need to make sure that all the users will get latest content. So you can invalidate those objects so latest content is fetched from the origin servers. However, this is an extra step to be taken and after certain free invalidations per month, you need to pay for these invalidations. Better way of doing this is using file versioning to serve a different version of the file that has a different name. AWS recommends that you include some sort of version identifier either in your file names or in your directory names to give yourself better control over your content. This identifier might be a date time stamp or a sequential number or some other method of distinguishing two versions of the same object. Okay, let's go back to distributions and see if it has been deployed. Well, the status is still in progress. It typically takes around 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Let's come back after the distribution has been deployed. Okay. The distribution status now changed to deployed. So let's grab this domain name here and access it in another tab. All right, we see access denied error. This could be because we have not specified a default root object and CloudFront does not understand to which specific object the request must be sent on the origin. So let's go back to the distribution, click on it and edit the general settings. And in here, let's add the default root object as index.html, uh, which is the root object for S3 static website. All right, let's save it. Okay, let's grab the domain name again and access it in another tab. And there we go. Our static website is now being served from CloudFront. All is good so far, right? However, let's see if our security restriction setting to let users only access from CloudFront URL and not from S3 direct URL works or not. Let's go back to S3 bucket and uh, grab that static website URL again and click on it. Hmm. We can still access our website directly bypassing CloudFront URL. This is because our bucket policy still has a statement to allow read access for all the users. So let's go back to S3 bucket permissions and to the bucket policy. Let's remove the statement and save the policy. Now let's refresh the S3 direct URL. It might take few refreshes and uh, there it is, access denied. And now let's hit CloudFront URL and our website is working. So this is how we restrict access to our bucket by allowing only the CloudFront user in S3 bucket policy. You can also add Route 53 C name uh, with your own domain names to redirect requests to this CloudFront domain name, but that is not covered in this lecture. This is it folks. CloudFront is an important service in AWS network landscape and especially helps web applications to serve better by caching content in 